one. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about with this chapter is how we get a flashback to the time Kum invaded Mrejwah and a confrontation with a Kainu. And one thing I like about this is not so much the fight itself, although that is pretty great, but the aftermath of it and how a Kainu is just is just left pondering with his thoughts about what exactly Kum is doing, what he's planning, and just how he's acting upon his own will when he's supposed to be a when he's supposed to be just kind of a slave to the government like it's a small detail i know but the fact that we see kind of even questioning things more at all even to the point of taking bonnie's words into consideration in my mind shows that for however however much he might still be a believer in absolute justice he's at the very least opening his mind enough to realize this situation in itself is not so black and white right now like the, the situation with Kuma has gotten has gotten a little bit out of the government's control, and 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 like the situation itself is just not as black and white as we'd like it to be. And at the very least, he's clued into the fact that something happened with, 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 with when it comes to Kuma's reprogramming. He's been that he's been unaware of this whole time. So, I, I guess what I'm getting at is I'm glad we're kind of seeing a kind of break. Like, like pretty much break ever so slightly out of that shell he's been he's been in, which you could say kind of started when with his meeting with the other stars after Dressrosa. But like, I'm glad we're getting like more of a character out of a Kainu. The only big question is where Oda is gonna take is is gonna is gonna take that is gonna take that because because for however cool it is to see Kainu question things more. I doubt he'll ever be an unwitting ally like Smoker or Okiji has been. Like he's he's gonna he's gonna do his own thing or wherever that leads him. And uh, yeah, I'm like I, again, I know it's kind of weird. I'm I'm kind of I know it's kind of weird. I'm kind of like I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of gushing over something that that was probably already there to begin with. But the thing is that for me, a Kainu has always kind of been this kind of. Akainu has unfortunately always been one of the biggest sticking points in One Piece for me in the sense of him kind of being a little bit stock standard in my opinion. Like he's basically every single every single marine who thinks that like to me he's he's just every single marine who thinks that yeah, pi pirates good, marine like like sorry, marines good, pirates evil. Though. That's kind of how I've just always seen him. He it's again, it's that black and white mentality of there's there's just no in between, but now we're kind of seeing him kind of embrace a lot more, like kind of, at least take into consideration a lot more of that sort of gray area of things. I think, and it's, it's it is just a little bit refreshing to see his character go through that. Um, but okay, let's talk about the confrontation on Egghead and Egghead with Luffy and Kizaru and all that, because yeah, it goes full blown chaotic with everyone throwing their hat into the ring against Kizaru. And right at the gate, despite still having misgivings about Luffy fighting Kizaru, one thing I do appreciate is how Oda kind of threw everyone at Kizaru, from Frankie trying to blast him to Bonnie jumping in, which, yeah, let's talk about that, because Kizaru calls Bonnie an acquaintance. So, they know each other. But at this point, under what circumstances do they know that each other is a question because we basically know that Bonnie is basically the crown prince of Sorbet Kingdom through, through basically Kuma being the former king that's the obvious part of this but with how fervently Bonnie defends her father's actions time and again and the fact that he wasn't actually a tyrant king as the government betrays him and combined with com and so combining that with Kizaru calling the acquaintances says to me that Kizaru himself definitely had a part to play in regards to Kuma's fall from grace, as it were. Like, we basically know, I'm sure, like, Cypherpole and the government's more direct agencies were involved with the downfall of the Sorbet Kingdom itself, but it feels like Kizaru himself played a much more direct part in Kuma's downfall. Like, that's kind of how I'm how I'm seeing things right now, because it, 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 and honestly, it would kind of... Just on a general level, it would kind of make sense that uh, that French Kizaru would would kind of be the one to do it because as we like Kizaru himself is a very weird animal in the sense where he he's not above using force, but he's he also kind of takes he has this kind of weird w w w weird lamentation of of regret of what of sometimes things he has to do, and 
I th I think with with Kizar with Kizaru and I think there's almost like I think I wonder if there's any kind of relationship between Kizaru and uh, Kuma we haven't seen yet in the sense where he in the sense where or despite constantly coming to blows with with the government with despite constantly like going to blows with the government over their policies and just how they how, how the whole system functions I I wouldn't be surprised if Kizaru to a certain extent actually kind of respected Kuma to a degree and that's and that's kind of how the, how they know each how Bonnie and and Kizaru know each other but again I'm I'm not I I I, I got Again, I got nothing to really base this off of, but just the simple exchange between Kizaru and Bonnie, like, that's all I'm kind of basing all this off of. It's just, like, a, a, a massive theory on my part. And, but, but in either case, like, Kizaru and Bonnie definitely, like, the exchange between Kizaru and Bonnie definitely indicates a lot of bad blood for one reason or another, but it would make sense in a way of connecting the reason and connecting the reason why the passive Eastern model set Kizaru's laser and why the Kuma models in essence were the first prototype because Kizaru probably had something to do with with Kuma's downfall from, from, from being a king to being like a, um, to end up as part of the revolutionary army and all that kind of thing so yeah uh, and yeah the end of the chapter pretty much sees the uh, sees Luffy transformed and restraining Kizaru, Kizaru while also seeing the busted old robot awaken and because of what we know about its history being tied to the void century now the fact that <clears throat> it re might be right awake reawaken might be because it's responded to Luffy's transformation into gear 5 like the robot probably knew Joy Boy once upon a time which would make sense as to why Vegapunk couldn't get get it to work and with the knowledge that the original plan of escape is supposedly gone out the window thanks to Kizaru this robot might be the last chance they have for escape that's that's what I'm thinking right now and and like the robot and and a com like a combination of the robots awakening and Luffy like restraining Kizaru at least for now might provide like the perfect cover to escape but that in itself still begs the question of like what it is Kuma's doing like like when when I'm like when, when when I'm looking at that flash when I'm looking at all these pieces that, that we've gotten with Kuma like with the with him climbing up the red line and the flashback we got in this chapter of like him like con being confronted by by a kainu it's like one of the things that's like it's one of those things where no matter how I try and rationalize the narrative threads in my head there's still a problem of, of what's of that that Kuma's behavior has been so erratic thus far that it's really hard to pin down a true motive of what he what it is he's doing or why he's doing it. Like it's like I guess in a lot of ways you could say what Kuma's doing right now could be considered similar to Fisher Tiger, but just it's also but it's also kinda of one of those things where we don't fully understand. we're not fully, fully it's kinda of hard to like Combine all these things together to fully understand Kuma's end, what Kuma's end game is here. Like the, Kuma's end game and all this is still a big mystery to me. That and that that's yet to be solved. And it's like I'm sure I'm sure Oda is gonna have some answers for us here. But it's like, can you kind of pick it up on trying to connecting these threads, Oda? Because it is kind of getting a little annoying. Not just not having anything to really go off of, honestly, with this. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and on this current show, which notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video. And guys, Dark Knight of Enemy, signing off. Later, everyone.